Hey, greetings everyone. Daniel Lowry with Anti-Siphon Training back with another episode in our Networking Fundamentals series. We're going to have some fun today because we're going to learn about network ports. Network ports might conjure up images of taking like a network cable and plugging it into an RJ45 port with an RJ45 connector. And I see where you're going there, but no, that is not what we are talking about, actually. That is a physical network port. So on that hand, yes, you would be right. But what we mean when we say network ports, we're typically talking about a virtual communication endpoint. This is something that's happening on the protocol level, right? Things that are happening under the, under the covers, under the hood, that you don't see it's abstracted away by software and all that other fun stuff. So that is what we mean when we say a network port. And these things are very, very useful because they help us define what services that we might be connecting with and are necessary to make said connections. That's a fun fact, right? Without the ports, you don't know where you're going and the network just gets jumbled up into a big old mess and it falls down on its face and you go, why no this work? I don't understand what's happening here. So that's why we need network ports. That's why they're a good thing. Now, hopefully I can kind of help illiterate a bit of what a network port is. And let's start off with the network. Let's imagine that our network and maybe the server itself is a, a large skyscraper. I like this idea. Okay, let's go, let's go with this. We got a large skyscraper inside of our skyscraper, a bunch of buildings, or not buildings, I'm sorry, uh, rooms. Rooms for our pleasure. We do whatever we want to with it. And of course, to get into those rooms, we have doors. A door blocks entrance or allows for entrance. So maybe some of those doors are closed and some of those doors are open. Interesting fact, our skyscraper, our skyscraper is so large, it's got 65,535 different rooms with 65,535 different doors or ports. So that's what's going on. Our rooms represent our possible services. So we might have a service going on in there, but we don't have to. And of course, to gain access to that service, we're going to need a door to go through. That is our port. So the door represents our port. And of course, each of them get a number. We do have labels for them as well. Think of network services like HTTP and RDP and FTP and SSH and so on and so forth, right? The list goes on and on and on. That's what's behind the door. But we've got a number on the door and the number sometimes corresponds directly with what the service is behind it. Sometimes it's more of a guideline and sometimes it's whatever we decided to make it that day, right? And so that brings us into the different categories of ports themselves. Now, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on that. First, I want to give you a little more, a little more meat on the bone when it comes to ports and services. So let's jump into my PC and see what we can look at when it comes to what an actual port is. So here we have uh, just a Windows terminal. I'm in a Windows 11 environment. And I've got my Windows terminal up and running. All I've got to do now is I'm going to run a command called nmap. If you don't have nmap, totally cool. Nothing wrong with that. nmap, like so. This is just the network mapper. It's a tool for doing a bunch of different networking stuff. One is for looking at remote or uh, local ports and seeing what's open and what's closed. So I'm going to run this with a few switches. Don't worry about what's going on. Again, you don't have to know how to use this tool. This is just to help us illustrate the point. And I'm going to give it a target of 192.168.1.209. So that's the network host that I'm going to scan for open ports. Fire that off. And of course, this will take a few seconds because it's going through 65,535 different ports. I told it to scan every TCP port to see whether or not it is open or closed and report back on what it finds. Let's see what it's got. It's finished. That didn't take too long. 13.34 seconds. Very cool. And I can see I've got a bunch of TCP ports that are open on that host. Port 21, port 22, 23, 25, and so on and so forth. And you can see there is a service that it is associating with each one of those things. Here I have FTP, I've got SSH, I've got Telnets, SMTP, there's HTTP, which, right, web stuff, we love web. And again, so on and so forth. It has some sort of correlation to the service type with the, with the port that is attached to. All right, so that 
is super cool. Right now, we know this box has open ports. We want to be able to use them. We, we could interact with them using clients of various types and, and sundry ways. So very cool. This is how we use networking, right? If it wasn't for these ports, we wouldn't get very far when it comes to making connections with these things. But that does bring us to, oh no, it almost does. You know what I want to also want to do? I want to show you local ports as well. Ways in which you can actually jump into your PC and see what ports do I have running. Let me open up another terminal here. And I will run the command netstat. And it's going to take a minute because it's looking at ports. And netstat is just a cool little tool that shows you what local ports you have that are open. And we can see 3389. This is my IP address for this machine. And 3389 is open. And it is being connected to by this network host on this port number. 52114. And you can see that that state is established. Cool. And I've got other open ports as well. And I can see that you'll notice that this one doesn't show that a port is open or it doesn't give us the port number. It just says HTTPS. Some ports are so well known and associated with a port number that they're interchangeable. And that does bring us to our categorization. How do we differentiate the different types of ports? Let's start off with the well-known ports, okay? Well-known ports start from the port number zero, which is not used, is there for, um, like it's reserved and typically unused, but it is a part of that range. So zero to 1,023, 1,023. That is the port range for the well-known ports. And these are ports that are specific to certain services. They are kind of married to it. Does that mean that you can't use them for other things? No, but that's not how things typically work. We typically make those for those specific ports. And we see that here, right? With that whole HTTPS, that's port number 443. 443 and HTTPS are put together. They are peas and carrots, right? Peanut butter and jelly. That's how things go. And that's under the well-known ports, right? So if we have a server stood up and I wanted to do something like an HTTP server, I, I wanted to give you the ability to go check out my website. I would start that web service and it would default to port 80. I can put it on other ports if I like, but port 80 is the well-known port for doing web and so on and so forth. FTP, SSH, Telnet, lots of fun. All right, let's see here. That brings us to registered ports. That's our next port range. And that's gonna pick up where we left off with the well-known ports. And it's gonna be 1,024 to, oh my goodness, it is 49,151. That's a big range. And it's almost identical in many ways, shapes and forms to what the well-known ports are. The well-known ports are basically saying this port equals this service, whereas registered ports give you the ability to kind of give you some guidelines like typically this is what we see. It's not a hard and fast rule necessarily, but it is uh, a gentleman's agreement, as it were, between everyone to say, hey, this service, this system has registered for this port, and we're all going to kind of agree that that's what it is. Okay, very cool stuff. I think of things like a SQL database. A SQL database is a great example. Let's jump back in here. I'll show you what I mean. Here, I'm going to go to Kali because I have a MySQL uh, client, MISQL, like this. And I can log in to a remote SQL service uh, using this client. So I give it the username of like roots, tell it to prompt me for a password, tell it the host name or the IP address, 192.168. 1.1, I think I'm 163. And then I'm going to dash dash SSL equals zero because I don't want it to try to use SSL encryption. Fire that off, give it my password. And look, I've been successful at connecting to that network service using a client. And that's all on port 3306. That's in that port range, right? Because remember, those registered ports go from 1,024 to 49,151. Let's see if the other machine had that as well, just to kind of show you that. Looking at our output, 
it looks like it does have that right there. Okay, so our well-known ports, this machine has, looks like these ports are in the well-known range, right? Because it's going from zero to under 1,024. And then here is in the registered range, going way, 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 way. Come on, keep going. There's more to more to be had, right? These all fall underneath that uh, range of 49,151. So all these ports are in that registered port range. Very cool stuff. So if you create an app, you can register your application or your service, if it requires a networking service, in that range. And then people will kind of, oh, we, we accept that as being true usually. Again, under certain circumstances, you can change that. But typically, that is what you're going to see. And that leads us to our very last range, which is going to be the dynamic range, the ephemeral range, the private range. Might hear any number of names of this thing, but basically these are the ports that are for various and sundry things. And they're not typically meant to stick around and run a lot. Maybe you're doing it for testing. Maybe you're uh, just quickly creating a network socket between two devices and then destroying that. That's the kind of stuff that you're doing here. So I'm thinking, the, uh, like I said, this is called the dynamic range. This is going to go right where we left off with registered at 49,152. And that goes all the way up to 65,535. Okay, so that's that port range for the dynamic ports. Again, like I said, this is stuff that just kind of is useful for us when we need something really quickly. Let me show you what I mean. So we're back. Let's go to let's go to my Kali machine again. Let me get out of here because I have Python installed. If I wanted to start a Python web server, even though that is web, but maybe I'm doing it for testing or something, I want to put it somewhere else. I could use that range, and that would be a really good place to start that server as far as a port range goes. So I can do Python 3-m server like so, and then I can tell it like 59,000, like so. And you can see it is listening on port 59,000 on 0000, a little fun IP address that basically means that if I have an adapter in this device, regardless of what that adapter is, it is listening on port 59,000. And now things like a browser can connect to that port and use HTTP. It's gonna be serving up web pages. Again, great for testing, great for doing all sorts of fun stuff there. So, and I can even show you where you can see that. Let's uh, let's kill this. I think I've got some, you know what we'll do? We will, no, that's fine. I'll just do, I can also run netstat here. Netstat is a very useful command. Dash A and T, I'm just gonna give it some uh, extra help here. And you can see there is a connection. Oh, that's a time wait. Here's an established one, excellent. So we see a TCP connection from my machine, 152, on port 43202. Again, above, well, no, that's, that is a, that's in the lower range. That's kind of funny that it uses. This one this is a better example, right? Again, it's not a hard and fast rule all the time. Sometimes it will use those if they are not in use. So you can see this one's in 53,498. That's in that dynamic range properly. And it is making a connection to this server on port 443. So that is a uh, connection to an HTTPS server, getting the HTTPS service, but the browser is using this. And that's a good point to bring up is in those dynamic ranges, a lot of times you don't need any kind of administrative uh, credentials or uh, root level access to get access to some ports. If you go back to the well-known ports, it's, it's a good possibility that you would need some administrative access to spin things up using those ports. You may or may not see that in the registered port range. Typically not though. Sometimes yes, just depends on what's going on. So there you go. That's network ports, a lot of cool stuff. And it's a useful thing to know whether or not 
if the port isn't listening or if it's on a different port, you might not get good connections because you're assuming that it's in a well-known port range, but because it's in test, it's in a different port range and you're trying to connect to the wrong port. You get the idea. Knowing what ports are, what they do, how they work, expands our networking knowledge and helps us down the road as we get into things like troubleshooting connectivity issues. Could be useful there. And making sure that we're running servers and services on the right port. If I'm expecting a web server to be up and running and I check for port 80 and nothing comes back, I don't see port 80 is open and it's supposed to be, well, maybe the server's crashed. Maybe I got to go turn that back on. Maybe I got to restart that service. Again, really great for troubleshooting to know all about ports. Whew, that was a lot of info. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully it's going to help you understand networking better and give you the leg up when you're trying to solve some issues and making things work. That said, if you liked what you saw, you know what to do. Give us a like and subscribe over at the Anti-Siphon Training YouTube channel. We got a lot of cool content coming out, so you got to be subscribed and hit that notification bell to know when we drop new stuff. Very, very cool. We're also doing a lot of stuff live. Check us out on Discord on Tuesdays. We do a live AMA. Wednesdays, we have our Anti-Cast, which is basically a webcast talking about all sorts of cool subjects, especially uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. So those are resources we try to make for you. So make sure you avail yourself of them to increase your knowledge and skills. That's it. I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great day.